Today on Knife Banner, we went outside to talk some camp knives, but apparently it's National Dirt Bike Day in our camp. How's it going guys and welcome to Knife Banner. Welcome back to the studio. Uh, as you could see from our uh, intro there, trying to shoot the Knife Banner portion of this out in the wild didn't pan out so well for us. So we came back to the studio where we have a little more control over the sound design. Uh, Jamie, you're a little more happy with that, right? Yeah, it's much easier. <laughs> a little, much, little bit easier. <laughs> there really were guys, there was like just dirt bike after dirt bike after dirt bike. So here we are, now you guys can hear us. Um, and we're gonna kick off with the first knife that we went out and tested and got dirty. Jamie, what do you got? Okay, so first knife on the table is the Mora Gearberg. And so we kind of broke this down into a few different categories. So this first category is kind of survival-ish knives, I guess you could say. Uh, and this one is more of a survival light type knife is how I'm gonna look at it. So the uh, Mora Gearberg is a very strong, robust knife. It has a nine inch blade, or sorry, excuse me, nine inch overall, 4.25 inch blade is the carbon steel. Uh, it doesn't say what carbon steel, but I imagine it's some sort of 1095-ish yeah, yeah. type steel. Um, with a drop point, Scandi grind, and a polymer handle. And one thing I have to say about this particular knife is when you look at it, you're like, uh, it doesn't it doesn't look as tough as it actually is when you get this thing in your hand it is a substantial piece of steel uh, so I think like look to uh, I guess feel ratio is is interesting on this one another thing to point out about this is you have a scandy grind here so your cutting power is going to be uh, pretty high on this one it's gonna rip through wood and that type of thing so if you're out doing bushcraft type tasks this is going to be a good one it's not going to be as much of a chopper as let's say the next one on the table which is the se6 which right. is what you're going to talk about but uh, i think for like a survival light knife or a knife that you can just throw in your pack uh, and have it be available to you and not super heavy this is a fantastic option and, and that's what i was going to say is is with the things that we did for kind of that survival category didn't excel great at chopping, but we didn't anticipate it would. Yeah, <laughs> we it's, both, a, it's a small knife, right? Yeah, we were both like, ah, it's not gonna chop great, but I mean, it got the job done. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the thing is when we talk about camp knives, when I talk about camp knives, what I'm always talking about is knives that I will take to like work on a different craft or brush up on my fire making skills or whatever. The reality of it is, is like when you go camping, you could probably just use the knife that's in your pocket and you're fine. You can open up your mountain house, you can open a bag of Doritos and a bag of marshmallows and you're camping, right? <laughs> Um, but I like to go out and, and play around with skills. And so that's kind of the varied things that we have on the table. So mm -hmm. for uh, this, the, the kind of the survival skill working on while you're camping, knife I picked was the SE6. This thing is a beast, obviously. So 11.75 inches overall. It's got a 6.5 inch blade. So over half of the knife is blade. 1095 steel, drop point blade, flat ground, and a 3D milled micarta handle. Now the, the, the handle's actually really cool on this. So it is a polished micarta. I usually don't like polished micarta because the whole point of micarta is to get a grip on the knife. Um, but because it has this milling in there, right, it actually makes for a really, really comfortable and really, really good um, grip to the knife. Right. Great knife. Uh, this thing excelled at all the tasks we threw at it. I mean, it even feather sticked really well with that flat grind. Yeah, I mean, it's it comes pretty decently sharp right mm -hmm. out of the box, so you're not gonna have any problems there. A um, Little bit jealous on the, the chopping prowess of it versus yeah. the Mora. <laughs> you got definitely got the better end of the deal there, but. For sure, yeah. yeah. And you know, here's the thing is, the SE6 is great. This is a great camp knife because again, you could take this knife out and you can do bushcraft, you can do firecraft, you can whittle, you can carve, you can whatever. And you know, whittle, it's obviously a very big knife. I'll show you, it's easy. Watch Matt pop it up like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but you really can, like this thing will just take, it'll just go to work. Um, so, I don't know, SE6 is a cool knife. Uh, it goes for about 140 bucks on the website. And uh, yeah, that was that was the, the one I had for that, that qualification. So the next one that we had up was for kind of the fire, or for, uh, for cooking actually. Yeah. We did some fire crafting, but so uh, cooking. Now again, when I go camping, for me, it's usually like a mountain house, right? Or I'll pre-prepare something. But I know a lot of you guys out there like to cook 
when you go camping, you like to you know bring along some food and some meat and, and cook grill something up. So, Jamie, what did you uh, choose for cooking? Sure. So kind of that food prep uh, category. This is kind of a knife that is just going to live in your pocket and might excel more than other EDC knives at food prep. Um, obviously, it's not going to be as good as like a kitchen knife, but uh, this is the Spyderco Endura 4. This has a 8.75 inch overall length, a 3.75 inch blade. It's VG10 drop point uh, with a full flat grind, and we'll get into that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and then an FRN handle, of course. So I think. The reason why this could excel at food prep, like a food prep type EDC, is, I think for two reasons. One is the overall length, so it's a fairly long knife. So if you have a bigger piece of food, you're going to be able to get through that bigger piece of food easier. Uh, we were cutting up tomatoes and peppers and stuff, and like I had no problem getting through either of those. The other thing is the full flat grind. So it's going to glide through those food items nicely versus something like uh, if you have more of a saber ground uh, type blade or kind of other grinds, I guess, are, are not going to excel as much as just that full flat grind when you're getting through things like food. So I think those are the two main reasons why the Endura 4 made it on uh, as my pick for the food prep knife. Um, but yeah, a great, great pocket knife, EDC as well. Yeah, um, and you and Kurt just did a whole knife banner on like food prep pocket knives. Right. Yeah, if you want to see a bunch of other maybe EDC knives that excel at the food prep aspect yeah. of EDC, yeah. check that knife or banner cool. out. Yeah. And guys, uh, I have over the last year, and Jamie's been doing this a little bit as well, I've been, uh, I've had a bunch of kitchen knives that I've been testing out, playing around in the kitchen, trying to learn more about them. And so uh, we've got some cool kitchen knife stuff coming your way soon. Um, on the note of more, maybe more of a, a kitchen-esque knife, uh, I went with the White River Camp Cleaver. So for a few reasons. One, uh, it has a micro to handle. Two, it's a cleaver. Three, it comes with an awesome, uh, <laughs> an awesome leather sheath. And four, it's made in the USA. So it kind of just check, checked all the boxes for me for something that I wanted to try out since uh, we could go out and test some of this stuff out. Um, so overall length on this thing is just over 10 inches. The blade is 5.6 inches, so again, you're getting more blade than handle on this knife. Um, S35VN blade, so a nice stainless blade. Uh, obviously, it's a cleaver style. It's got a flat grind, and then again, that, that burlap micarta handle. Um, I really wanted to bring the Topps 8-inch dicer. That was what I wanted to bring. Um, but we uh, Topps had, has had some production snags with that, and so we're not sure when we're going to see those again. So I wanted to show you guys something that you could actually would be practical. So the Topps dicer would be a great camp kitchen knife. Um, but this cleaver also proved to be a very uh, adept camp kitchen knife. So obviously a little bit thicker of a kitchen knife. So um, handling things like tomatoes and stuff, it still did great though. I mean, it sliced right through them. The factory edge on this thing was razor sharp. Um, so even though it's a little thicker, it didn't smash down the tomatoes. Obviously it made easy work of the meat. However, Jamie was telling me, he's like, oh, we should try to cut the bell pepper this certain way. But like, I guess people cut the top of the bell pepper out and then like pull the stem out or something. How's it supposed to work? If you don't know how to cut a bell pepper, yeah, I yeah. feel like that's like the standard approach is where you yeah. like cut the top out. But yeah. you should do it the way I did it. Yeah, you do it the way, because that's the way that I normally do it. But Jamie's like, hey, let's try this. I'm like, okay. But the cool thing about the test is one thing we found is, is if you have food prep that requires like piercing or anything, this yeah. is not the knife. And that's the reason why I wanted yeah. you to do it. I wanted yeah. to like, do a little bit of a tip test on it. Yeah, exactly. So definitely not nice for that. Um, but one thing that I did really like is that you have this belly across the blade here. And so it does make for a nice sweeping cut motion that you can make. Um, so bell peppers, even the meat, everything that I cut with this to the tomatoes, I was able to use that. The one thing that I would like on this, because it is more of a kitchen knife than, you know, let's say the, the one that uh, Jamie chose, is I kept reaching for like a pinch grip. Yeah. I wanted a pinch grip because I've been playing with real kitchen knives so much. I'm getting more particular about my, my kitchen knives. So I would have liked a pinch grip on this, but with it being a cleaver, I can completely understand. On, on a proper cleaver, you don't need a pinch grip on a proper yeah. cleaver. It's a little square up front there. Yeah, it is a little square up front, but did really great. And I even got to chop cleave some, some steak. Uh, after the first two, Jamie's like, maybe let's just cut it. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Um, and this thing goes for 250 on the website. So a really great piece from White River Knives. Um, next up, we mess around with some Firecraft. And so Jamie, 
What, uh, what did you choose for that? Right, so this next category, obviously kind of that fire making, bushcrafty type category. So maybe a little bit smaller knives. This is the Bark River Puko. And this comes in at 8.75 inches. You got a 4.375 inch blade. It is CPM 3V, so that's pretty dope uh, with a convex grind. And again, we'll get to that in a minute. And then you get that polished micarta handle and this, is more polished than the SE is. I feel yes. like the SE is more of like a satin type finish where mm -hmm. this is just, it's, it's, it's like almost glossy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, which is an interesting choice. Bark River does that on basically all of their knives. Yeah. Um, this knife for feather sticking was nuts. Yeah. Bark Rivers in general just come razor sharp out of the box and all of them come with the convex grind. And I feel like with a convex grind, when you're feather sticking, you have a lot of fine control because you have that curved edge mm -hmm. that you're able to just kind of rock and get in the right spot versus like a Scandi is very aggressive when it comes to feather sticking. So you're either biting really hard or you're not biting at all. And there's not a lot of wiggle room in between there. But with a convex grind knife, you have that ability to take that edge and just kind of roll it into place and get it perfect to get that nice curl. And that's what I found with this is it's super easy to feather stick, especially with the wood that we had. But <laughs> Oh yeah, the wood, let's, let's be clear. The wood that we had was the most perfect wood that you'll ever have for making fire ever. <laughs> um, I think that was the, the main draw of this knife for me was how well the convex grind feather stick and got through uh, the wood material with just the kind of that fine control. So that's a Bark River Puko. Uh, if you're looking for something in that bushcraft fire making realm, this is a great option. The back's nice and sharp, good for striking. Mm -hmm. yep. So as far as like actually striking a fire steel, it does come with a sharpened spine. I think most Bark Rivers do. Yeah. And uh, again, you have this knife leather sheath that uh, complements the knife nicely. Yeah. Cool. So. Right um, so for my Firecraft knife, I chose the Gerber Principle. So this was a knife that uh, we learned about from Gerber oh, was this year, early this year. I yeah, think. I think so. Yeah, yeah, early this year. Um, and it's one that I've wanted to get out and get dirty. I've been interested in testing it. And uh, honestly, I really liked it. Um, it's a good little knife. I mean, it comes in at like 60 bucks, so it's it's not a very expensive knife. Overall length is 7.5 inches. You get, the blade is three inch, just over three inches. It's a 420 HC drop point blade. It's got a true Scandi on it. And then it's got this nice rubber, o rubber over mold handle. Now, I usually don't like rubber handles. They did a really good job with this though. It feels nice. It doesn't, sometimes you get a rubber handle and it's, it's hard or almost plasticky. Yeah. This, it feels like rubber. Like it, it feels really comfortable and nice in hand. Um, now, I said it was a true Scandi and you might be sitting at home looking at this and 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 tell and asking yourself, no, it looks like it's got a secondary bevel to it. It doesn't. Uh, it really is a true Scandi grind. Um, it's just the way that they sharpen it from factory. Is it looks like it it has that yeah, bevel I, to it? I think they're just knocking the burr off, essentially. Exactly is what they're doing. Exactly. So because um, that was something that I said the first time I saw it too. I was like, oh, is that a true Scandi? Um, but it really is. This was an awesome little knife for Firecraft um, feather stick, like a dream. It's got a nice sharp edge on the back and uh, the sheet that it comes with is actually really interesting. I don't have all the bits and bobs to it here with me, but um, first off the sheet locks, which is really nice. And, and the cool thing about it is, is that it, it's, it's a really light release. So it's not like you have to like jam your thumb over to release it, but it's a really nice light release. And then the back comes with this super modular system. So you can wear it on a belt, you can wear it on Molly, you can strap it to a backpack, whatever you want to do with it. Um, it comes with a bunch of clips and stuff um, that you can use as well. So anyways, this is a, a nice little knife, the Gerber Principle. Um, this is a great just camp chore knife in general. Obviously it wouldn't be great for like a ton of batoning or something like that. That's when you'd go back to your SC6. Yeah. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, and then we wouldn't have went camping if we didn't bring an ax. We had fun with the axes, man. Uh, we had a lot of fun with the axes. I'm going to let you go first. Okay. And then, <laughs> and then I'll talk on my experience with my axe. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I think I got the better end of the deal on this, but yeah. we'll, we'll talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. So this is the, uh, if I get it in a shot here, this is the Holtzbrook Salient. It's a 20 inch uh, total axe. It's, you know, got a pretty traditional, it says Swedish steel, but it's just, it's going to be a high carbon type steel, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then it, with a hickory handle. I think Holtzbrook just makes fantastic axes, mm -hmm. just in general. So I think it's no surprise that this excelled at being a, you know, 20 inch hatchet type 
axe, right? So we had a little incident with a tree um, <laughs> with, with your axe. Uh, and this one, I don't think there was any argument on what axe performed a little bit better in, in that specific task. All right, we're gonna see if the uh, Holtzbrook fares any better. <laughs> These come with a great edge right out of the box. Uh, your cutting edge is, is not super uh, steep, mm -hmm. so it does bite fantastically into wood. So mm -hmm. I think that was the, one of the main takeaways from this particular axe and most Holtz, Holtzbrooks in general is just like, they come with a great edge out of the factory and they're just great axes, so. All right, Holtzbrook hatchet for the wind. <laughs> That's the Holtzbrook Salen Hatchet. Um, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, and it does come with you know, kind of your, I guess you would call this a sheath? Yeah, it's like kind a, of a traditional leather yeah. sheath, just a cover for the edge. Your edge cover for, uh, yep. for your hatchet there, so. The other cool thing about Holtzbrook is, is they are in the business of making axes. Right. Right, like you buy a Holtzbrook and they've got like carpenter axes, they've got felling axes, they've got splitting axes. I mean, they got them all, right? And so we chose kind of a, a nice camp-sized axe. And they've been doing it for forever, forever. too, so. Exactly, yeah. So my experience. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I chose the uh, CRKT Frere. Uh, you know, it's, it's it's kind of a honestly, it's it probably built as more of maybe like a tactical type axe, especially with this big beard here, right? Uh, I mean, traditionally that was used for like grabbing shields and pulling shields out of the road during battle or something like that. But 16 inches overall, it's got a 1055 uh, steel head. I mean. With, with axes and stuff like that, you just get kind of a, a solid working steel. Yeah. Um, and then it's, it comes with a nice, it's actually a really nice hickory handle. So, um, and then uh, sheath-wise, doesn't come with anything. It has a rubber edge out of the box. So you can keep that to keep your to keep it over your edge if you want to. I would probably just make a sheath for this. I like making sheaths, so. Um, but yeah, uh, my experience with this was not great. I will say that this did not come sharp at all out of the box. Um, and that is 100% we just grabbed it out of the box and left and went up the mountain. Yeah, up oh, the sharpest axe in the book. Here, look. When that all fails, guys, you just Captain America it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's enough for the old Frere for me. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, I'm good. Always check your tools before you go out to make sure they're gonna do the job you want them to do. Uh, so I can't fault CRKT 100% on that. I should have checked it. I could have put an edge on it. Uh, with the edge, it would have performed a lot better. Uh, it does have more of a steep angle to it, as Jamie was kind of talking about before. So the edge does have more of a steep, steep angle, so it would be less likely to take out nice big chunks like the Holtzbrook would. Um, it's kind of a cool looking ax. I think it'd be fun to like throw around. We actually didn't get a chance to throw it. We were going yeah. to, but then with the motorbikes and all that other stuff, we ended up just packing up and leaving. Um, yeah, so <laughs> not a great experience, but I will take I will take some of the blame for that. I will yeah. take some, I didn't check my tools before I went out. There's a subset of people that are into regrinding axes. Yeah. And like that could be really good mm -hmm. with a regrind on it, especially if you needed to do like, if you look at a carpenter's axe, it's a similar profile. The beard obviously is much bigger than a carpenter's axe, but you can really get in and yep. choke up and do some detail work with yep. it. And I think it would excel at that just with uh, a different edge on it. And that goes uh, for about 67, six, uh, 68 bucks on the website. So cool little axe, uh, maybe you regrind it, maybe you don't, maybe you make a sheath for it, maybe you don't, but for sure, put an edge on it before you take it out. <laughs> you got nothing hanging out and no loose clothing. So yeah, a lot of good ones on the table. Uh, Jamie, did you did you have a, a favorite that you used, or was there one that you wanted to use for mine, or kind of what, what's your what's your takeaway with some of these on the table? Honestly, I think my most surprising experience was just using the Bark River to feather a stick. I, I don't have a lot of experience with convex grinds; it's not a very common factory grind. Right. So having a convex grind and being able to experience how it works uh, and kind of its differences between other grinds was was really eye opening for me, and that. Uh, I was super surprised. I feel like you don't hear about convex and grinds a lot when you are talking about like yeah. bushcraft and stuff like that. It's, it's always scandy, scandy, scandy. Yeah. Right? It's also just a harder grind to do in mass on in yeah. a factory, right? For sure, for sure. Um, I would say out of the ones on the table, I'd say the most surprising was actually the principle. The Gerber principle actually surprised me the most. It was really comfortable, really sharp out of the box. Uh, it got everything done I wanted to do. And um, to be honest, it feels like it would just be a handy little utility blade mm -hmm. to have. So I think I think the Gerber principle would be my would be my choice on the table. 
Um, obviously, I want to go to the SE6 just because it's such a beast. Yeah. But but I I think the Gerber was the most surprising. Was the one that I was like, oh wow, like like this isn't a knife that I was considering purchasing, but I considered purchasing that knife. Yeah. So I don't know, kind of a, kind of a cool deal. Um, so anyways, guys, uh, there are some camp knives for you. We hope that you guys enjoyed. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're glad we were able to come back and get some good sound for you, so that always works out great. But let us know if you guys have a favorite on the table or what your favorite camping knife is down below in the comments, and uh, catch you on the next one. Welcome to the end screen. Make sure to hit subscribe if you want more awesome knife content. Check out bladehq.com for all your knife needs. And uh, Jamie's put together a sweet playlist over here, so definitely click that and check out some uh, sweet videos.